Hello everybody, welcome to the channel Out of Ammo, Out of Time. I'm your host as always, Krabby Terror Aid. And here we are in episode 51 of season 2 of the Investigator Games with everyone's favourite photographer and reporter, Daryl Simmons. Yes, if you're new to this channel, welcome. Welcome. Uh, really awesome to see new people uh, joining the channel and seeing what we're doing here. What is the Investigator Games, I hear you ask? Well, it's like the Squid Games. It's like the Hunger Games. It's like no other games. We take each Investigator true solo, yes, true solo, through a scenario in the season one that was The Gathering. And in season two, that is the Midnight Mass. Every single Investigator in Arkham Horror, the card game, is in these games. Yes, they're all there to see uh, years and years of investigators trawling through True Solo, the highs and the lows, and depending on how they go, they end up in a league table like this one. Yes, and we can see here is the league table from top to bottom. Yes, we have Leo and Monterey Jack at the top of the table with, with Roland Banks and Ash Pete coming in third and fourth. And then all the way down the bottom, we have poor old Jim and Calvin. So yes, spoilers, if you are new to um, Arkham Horror, the card game, um, uh, you've never played before, I would suggest you go and check out, um, there's plenty of excellent videos on how to play for the first time. Uh, I'm assuming you know how to play at least a little bit. Um, but I also recognize that people come here, relatively new people who are just looking to see how different investigators work. Uh, also, um, I have done an in-depth video on the Midnight Mass, everything you could ever want to know, me and some other content creators, law, story, gameplay, strategy, the works on the Midnight Masks. It's a challenging scenario. It's an awesome scenario. And I'd suggest you check that out as well with lots of, there's heaps of other videos. There's law videos. I do those as well. So check it all out. So yes, Daryl Simmons, um, we're going to go through his um, card and what he does. Then we will go through his deck and then the investigator games, we will wait for the horn and we will kick off. So yes, he is a photographer and reporter traded. Now if we look at his stat line, he has two willpower. Ouch! So not great on the old... Uh, <laughs> on the old mythos, that's for sure. Five intellects. So yes, obviously, even though he's a survivor, that tells us that he's probably closer to some kind of seeker survivor, which he is. Uh, only two combat. So yeah, this this dude's not fighting anything much uh, most of the time. And three agility, which allows him to evade reasonably okay. So yeah, apart from the five intellect, which is very high, he's really low on the other stats. I would say from playing him in the gathering, he's not really a true solo kind of guy. And I think his special abilities kind of um, kind of play to that as well. But however, uh, you can play him true solo. I just not don't think he would be a strong choice for that. So you begin the game with Daryl's codec in play. That's the first thing. So we should talk about Daryl's codec now because he's one of those investigators that's, uh, you know, a bit like Duke with Ashcan. You're kind of like wedded to this asset <clears throat> and without it, uh, the investigator doesn't quite play right. So uh, Daryl's codec, uh, it's a two cost asset, but it starts in play. Now, the reason it's two-cost asset is for some reason it might end up back in your hand or something or in your deck or something else. So uh, yes, so that's what that's there for. It's got obviously three pips on the side, which you would rarely use, I, I imagine, very rarely. Uh, and it has a reaction trigger after an enemy or treachery enters play. Exhaust Daryl's Kodak 
place a resource from the token pool on that enemy or treachery as evidence, which is kind of like he's taking a photo of it. And reaction trigger after you discover any number of clues, move that many evidence on enemies or treacheries at that location or not any location because some enemies or treacheries, I guess, could be sitting in other places to Daryl's Kodak. So essentially, uh, the Kodak is there to uh, acquire evidence, if you like, um, from enemies and treacheries. Uh, now, of course, if there's more people playing, uh, because it's after an enemy or treachery enters play, so it doesn't have to be specifically you. Um, there could be other people who are triggering that. And um, you could be discovering clues at locations where other people are engaging enemies. Now, in true solo, that's going to be more difficult. So again, that's probably why Daryl is probably more suited to multiplayer, but that's okay. Um, so that's Daryl's Kodak, essentially. Now, that does align with then Daryl's um, ability, which is a fast action during a skill test at your location. You can spend an evidence from an asset you control in this case, Daryl's Kodak, or it could be others though, but in this case, Daryl's Kodak, reduce the difficulty of this test by two. So um, that allows you to bring down the difficulty. So it's a little bit like a flashlight kind of effect. Um, if, if, if the shroud is two, it becomes zero, that kind of thing. So you can reduce the difficulty. So, so normally when you're doing skill tests, you're the difficulty is fixed and you are uh, using your skill plus cards to boost your skill to pass that difficulty. In this case with Daryl, it's, it's different. It's a different kind of approach. And there's all kinds of ways you can build really fancy decks. Uh, I've seen them where you essentially uh, re reducing difficulties to, to, to minimums. Uh, but you're not necessarily changing your skill level, but you could do both, of course. So yeah, that's how that works. Then there's an Elder Sign effect, which is plus one, and place one evidence on an asset you control. So um, that's nice if that pops up. The truth is darker than any of us know. It has six health, eight mental health, which is, yeah, that's okay. Six is okay. You know, you wouldn't want to go lower than that. Eight's okay. So yeah, it's all okay from that perspective. Now if we flip over uh, Daryl and have a look at the back of his card. Deck size 30, standard deck size. He can take survivor cards 0 to 5. So your whole suite of survivor cards. Uh, seeker cards 0 to 2. So not the high level seeker cards, but the, you know, all the ones you would want. The Malign Christophers and the magnifying glasses of this world, that kind of jazz. You can have all of those. And neutral cards, of course. You um, get your Daryl's Kodak, you get Rune filmed and a random basic weakness. We will talk about those in a moment. This is Daryl's backstory. Even while growing up in Arkham, Daryl always knew that there was something not quite right about the strange little town. After graduating from high school, he went to work for the Arkham Advertiser as a photographer. And in the years since, he scoured every inch of the city. But on one fateful night, he saw something truly indescribable, a horror that shook his world to the core. His editor says he was just seeing things, but he knows the truth. With his trusty camera in tow, he will not rest until he has captured photographic evidence of the horrors that dwell in the shadows of his hometown and beyond. Just one good shot is all he needs. I like the thematic alignment of Daryl. Uh, getting evidence, uh, using that evidence to essentially understand the mythos, which means that he gets benefits in terms of passing tests. So, you know, he's using his camera to gather the evidence. A really nice kind of way that that's all thematically aligned. Really, really like that. It's really great. So that's Daryl Simmons in a nutshell. Has anyone else out there tried Daryl True Solo? Um yeah, I'd be interested to know how you found playing him. Now, in terms of the deck, uh, now every uh, it's 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 uh, in section two, paragraph two of the Investigator Games rules states that every investigator must use a standard starter deck. 
uh, in the in season one, which then can be upgraded after that. Uh, now the starter decks used to be provided by FFG, but they no longer are. But they're easy to make. They're essentially uh, the uh, core set and then cards from the respective campaign that the investigator came from. So in that this case, that is the Scarlet Keys. So those are the cards that you're only allowed to draw from in the gathering, and then you can upgrade with anything after that. So we don't, don't get too fancy after that. So now Daryl didn't, um, had, sorry, Daryl had seven um, points to spend. He, uh, spoilers, he did uh, reasonably well in the gathering. So we were able to do a few things. So I'll just, I'm not going to go through all the cards though. If you want to see a more detailed breakdown of every single card uh, and why I put it in there, then I suggest you go back to season one and have a look at uh, that um, video instead. But we'll just go through the ba basics here. Now, the, the, the weakness that Daryl has, I've got it hidden here, but it's, um, you can't see it, can we look at cards. It's the good old indebted. Uh, you start with uh, two fewer resources. So that's why Daryl only has three resources because of indebted. So that was his random basic weakness. His uh, signature weakness is ruined film. It's a treachery. Uh, if you draw this, remove four evidence from cards you control. For each evidence you cannot remove this way, take a horror. So you can essentially lose half your um, half your uh, mental strength right there if you've got none. So if you draw this right at the beginning, um, it could be bad. If you draw it later in the game, not so bad, but uh, yeah, pretty pretty nasty weakness. Irrefutable proof, reduced to nothing by the light of day. Yeah, they were the good old days when um, taking photos was actually on uh, yeah, real film that could be ruined. <laughs> not anymore, but uh, yeah, that's what that's about. Um, now, the other things are that I had 7 VP to, um, sorry, I should say Daryl had 7 VP, not me. I, I haven't, I've had nothing to do with these decks. This is all Daryl's choices, of course, um, is uh, we put in Press Pass, a uh, really nice card. It takes up the, um, the it takes up the uh, accessory slot. Uh, it's a four cost asset, so it is pricey. But uh, reaction trigger after you spend one or more clues or place one or more clues on your location, exhaust press past, you can take an additional action this turn. Um, so uh, you can, there are plenty of cards that allow you to put clues on locations and there are even weaknesses that do that. But one of the ways we'll be spending clues, of course, is to get out cultists. So we can, what it essentially means is that if we spend two clues to bring out a cultist, um, it means that we, we, we can exhaust press pass and essentially that's a free action, the spending the two clues to get out the cultist. is a really nice effect, particularly in Midnight Masks. Anyone who's played the Midnight Mask knows that time number of turns is incredibly tight. So anything that's going to give you extra actions is always welcome. Now, the other thing I'd put in was an upgraded base ball bat. Um, and the reason for that is that uh, this is our primary weapon, um, pretty good weapon and upgraded even better. Uh, it takes an action, of course, you fight, you get plus two um, combat for the attack. Uh, it does plus one damage. If you get a skull or, or, or a, an auto fail, you can return it to your hand or it deals an extra damage, but then you have to discard it. But um, the only problem with the baseball bat is it takes up two hand slots. So that's the only issue with it, but pretty good weapon. So we've got two of those. And then the other one is the Ace of Rods. The Ace of Rods, the Ace of Rods, sorry. That's a three cost asset. And during your turn, remove Ace of Rods from the game. You can take an additional action this turn, which you get plus two to each of your skills. Now, this is a really great card. Um, anyone who's seen Kaimani 
uh, use this in the last um, episode knows how effective this card can be. So a uh, really, really good card, particularly if you have some kind of action where you're combining skills, really has a big effect. And again, in the Midnight Masks, really, really handy. And it's great because if you get it at the beginning of the game, you can just whack it into the tarot slot. It's there when you need it. Um, yeah, I really like it. It's only costs one XP. It is fairly pricey, but if you get, like I said, if you get in your opening hand, then you, you get it for free. So very nice. So that those were the upgrades. Don't know, what do you think? Uh, we'll see how we go. So yeah, let me just close and shuffle all that up. So here we are. We are organized as per usual in Octagon. We're here at the house here. Daryl is walking around the house. Uh, which still has a for sale sign on it. Interestingly, nobody's uh, bought it. Looks like a real fixer-upper to me. Looks um, like it's got quite a nice wide veranda there. There's the attic, of course. You can see the little uh, round gabled window at the top. Uh, Two-storey. Um, what's not to like? Yeah, I reckon you could really turn this into quite the uh, quite the home. Although... Looks like the front garden needs a bit of work. There's no gate or fence or anything. You'd think there would be something like that. Um, but uh, maybe it looks different in summer. I suppose this is a winter shot, isn't it? Um, yeah, so interesting. Quite a large backyard as well. So there's opportunities, granny flat, that kind of thing. So anyway... I digress. So, so yeah, Daryl is there. He's walking around the house. He's got his trusty Kodak camera in hand. Uh, you would think he would have moved to like an iPhone by now, particularly with 16 coming out. And But no, no, he's old school, the old Daryl. He, he does like his 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 Kodak. So uh, fair enough. Uh, um, and actually, I spoke to him in the trailer. Thank you, Miskatonic trailer trailers as always for your support and sponsorship of the investigator games you got somewhere to go something to do miskatonic trailer miskatonic trailers can do it for you yes um so we had a chat in the trailer prior to uh coming out into arkham this morning uh so yeah daryl I, I spoke to him about the fact that i should have used an iphone or, or even android you wouldn't get ruined film anymore but no he says that like LPs, there's just something about the grain and the quality of a good old-fashioned photograph that you just can't capture in a digital sense. Yeah, okay, I, I get it. He's, he's, he's one of those sort of hipster, old-school kind of characters. I get that. In fact, this is a bit of an old photo of Daryl. He's now got a beard and a few tats, which aren't really on here. But yes, he's, he's, he's a bit, bit of a hipster like that. So... Um, yeah, he uh, he's pretty pretty confident guy actually. So he did very well in the gathering. I think people wildly underestimated him. He did really well, and he is hoping to capitalize on that win in the gathering here in the Midnight Masks. And we will see how he goes. So we've just got to really just read out the act and agenda, and then we will wait for the horn to go off. So agenda one A. Predator or prey, Lita seems convinced of a conspiracy within the city of Arkham. She believes that a secret cult serves the ghouls that live in the crypts beneath the city, and that several of the cult's prominent members are scattered throughout Arkham. You don't actually need to say throughout Arkham. You could probably just say several of the cult's prominent members are scattered throughout. As you begin searching for them, you can't shake the feeling that you too are being hunted. Action, resign, you don't want to risk taking too long, so you head to safety with the information you have gathered. And uncovering the conspiracy, you have one night find members of this cult and unveil their plan. The more members of the cult you can find and interrogate before midnight, the better. Action, the investigators spend two clues per investigator as a group draw the top card of the cultist deck. Objective, find as many unique cultist enemies as you can, Add them to the victory display. If there are six unique cultist enemies in the victory display, advance note. Not all of the six of them are in the cultist deck. Hint, hint. There we go. Yes, we are playing in standard mode in Octagon in the Midnight Masks. 
And um, yeah, oh, there it goes. There goes the bell and Daryl waves at the crowd. The crowd cheers and we are ready to play episode 51 of season two of the Investigator Games. Okay, what do we want? What do we want? What do we want? Well, we definitely want Milan Christopher because that will help a lot. We also want the baseball bat. Um, yes, getting the tarot, the, the Ace of Rods would also be great. So let's draw many. See how we go. Let's draw our five. Okay, there's the Ace of Rods. So we'll definitely keep that. Oh, that's the Ace of Rods. What am I doing? Okay, that's good. Um, I think I might throw the other four in because I really, really want to get Milan because what Milan will do is mean we'll have more resources, you know, which is really helpful. So let's draw four more. One, press pass, yeah. Two, three, four. No Milan, Christopher. Okay, that's that's a little disappointing that we don't have him, but okay. We will take what we've got. Now we can put the Ace of Rods straight out, so that's good. So we've got the Ace of Rods uh, out on the deck. That's great. Um, yes, so yeah, that's that's an okay start. Not, not perfect, but okay. All right, so what are we gonna do here? So yeah, first action, I think I will um, well, we can't, uh, probably, I'm going to do things a little bit different here. I'm going to draw a card and gain a resource as the first action. That's what I'm going to do first. Don't usually do that, but in this case I am. We get the flashlight, okay, and we take a resource. So we've now got four resources. I don't need the flashlight at the moment because, you know, shrouds are pretty low. But for my second action... I'm going to spend the four, yeah, and I'm going to bring out the press pass. Let's just move these over here. So this has got space to exhaust. We know it exhausts. You know, you remove it. It's the press pass that you exhaust when you spend one or more clues or place one or more clues on your location. Okay, so that's our second action. And third action, I think we try and get this clue. It's a two, we're a five. I think we just straight up do two V five. Let's see how we go. Two versus five. What does the chaos bag have? And it's got a minus one, so we succeed and we get that clue. Great. So we've got a clue. Great. So yeah, pretty, pretty good start really. Pretty standard start. We availed ourselves of the facilities we drew a card, got a flashlight, got a resource. We we paid for press pass, so we've got that down. And uh, then we got the clue. So we can move up and get the second clue next time. And in fact, we can then use the press pass because we will spend the clues. So uh, very nice. Okay, let's move into a really nice synergy with Daryl, who is kind of like a press person. So it all fits very nicely. Okay, let's move into the enemy phase. Or yes, indeed, the enemy enema phase as I call it there are no enemies or enemas to speak of so let's move into the upkeep and we get the baseball bat yay that's good because we're gonna need it um yes we need it probably fairly quickly but anyway we'll see how we go um yep so we will move in to the first mythos phase the first doom is down let's see what the good old encounter deck has and it has a locked door yes couldn't ask for a better card attach the location with the most clues there are no clues anywhere so we will lock the door in the house yep and we'll send that to the back there we go no problem great okay awesome Let's move in to the investigation phase. Three actions on to Daryl. Okay, what are we going to do? Uh, whoa, 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 whoa. Everybody's going, whoa, 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 whoa. Hold on there, Krabby. It's a treachery. 
Yes, after an enemy or treachery enters the play. Ah, uh, yes, see, nearly forgot. Exhaust Daryl's Kodak and put a resource on the treachery as evidence. Okay, so we will put a resource here. So there is, uh, is evidence on this locked door. I've discovered any more no clues. <laughs> oh, I don't think we can just drop a clue. Uh, no. Uh, okay. Oh dear. Um, could we have put this somewhere else? We could. We could have, well, I suppose we could put it here. Just thinking, actually. We could, um, I might change this here because um, attached to the location with the most clues and without a locked door attached. Um, so we could actually put this somewhere like River Town or somewhere else. But the problem is, is then we've actually got to do a fight of four or evade, which when, which we could try. But the problem is, is it's the Midnight Masks. And the last thing we want to be doing is messing around, trying to game things just to get one of those. So you know what? I am... Um, I'm going to leave it there, you know, because I don't have time. Yeah, uh, you know, like, yeah, it'd be great to put it somewhere else, you know, knock down the um, knock down the door, get get a clue and then get, get one of these. But it, it's just wasting time. It might not work the first time. And, then, and uh, yeah, no, don't have time for that. But anyway, there we go. All right, first action, we will move to Rivertown. There's just not enough time in the Midnight Mass to mess around with stuff. Um, yep. Um, second action, let's go ahead and investigate. So a one versus a five. Chaos Bag gives us a minus two, so we succeed. Great. We've got one action left. Now, um, yep. So final action, we are going to spend the two clues. Yep. Let's shuffle this up. Let's see who we get. Oh, we just get Wolfman Drew. That's so weird. Every single time. I think we've had Wolfman Drew either first or second. And he's kind of not really my favorite cultist to get. <sighs> Particularly if you're not really much of a fighter. But anyway. Um, now, because we spent one or more clues, and you, it is spending, isn't it? Yeah. Um, exhaust the press pass. You may take an additional action. So we can get an extra action. Um, what should we do? Um, <laughs> Do we go to the graveyard or do we go for more difficult um, clues? Hmm. Does a graveyard are quick, easy clues, but sometimes that's best left for later. Yeah, I think um, I think we will move to Miskatonic University because uh, yeah. Okay. So yeah, not bad, not bad. We um we we moved to River Town. We got the clue. We then spent our two clues to bring out Wolfman Drew. That was the most disappointing thing. Uh, and then because of that, we exhausted the press pass and we got ourselves an extraction and moved to Miskatonic University. Okay. Okay, let's see. Enemy phase. There are enemies, but they're not doing anything. Upkeep, we get Deduction. That's a good card to get, particularly for Miskatonic University. Happy with that. Okay, that's good. So let's move in to the 
Mythos phase, second Doom is down. Let's see what the encounter deck has. And it's got, you must either spend a clue or take two damage. Well, we've got no clues to spend. So we're going to have to take the two damage. Oh dear. Uh, we don't have Malign Christopher to soak any damage. So that's, that's not good because if we get too many of those, we could be in a bit of strife. Okay. Whoops. Okay, let's move in to the investigation phase. Three actions on to Daryl. Okay, so um, I think I know what I'm going to do here now. Let's use the L deduction. Oh, no, first of all, first action, we're going to spend two. I'm going to bring out the baseball bat because, you know, I've been kind of floating along without having that. But, you know, if enemies pop along, we need to be able to deal with them. So we've got the baseball bat on board. Second action, let's go ahead and investigate. So a five, six versus a four. Do we do the seven? Yep, let's do five. Seven versus four. We've got lucky in hand. So seven versus a four, let's see what the chaos bag has. And the chaos bag has a cultist, which is minus two, we succeed, but we place a doom on the nearest cultist enemy, which is not great. Okay. Um, but it does mean that we get both of those clues. Yep. Great. Uh, now for our fight for our third action we will go ahead and spend those clues um, let's see who we get shuffle it up ah we get Peter Warren so Peter Warren's actually engaged with us oops <laughs> however we get exhaust the press pass so we um, we get an extra action so what do we do here um, hmm, I guess we evade three on a three. I guess we evade Peter Warren. We could hit him, I suppose. But, hmm. Hmm. Really need to get some more clues. Maybe we should have waited before we spent those two. <laughs> um, maybe that wasn't such a great idea. All right, we better do an evasion. Okay, let's use shed a light. So four versus a three. Chaos bag gives us minus three, so we don't succeed. Okay, let's move in to the enemy phase. So we take another damage from Peter Warren. Upkeep. Okay. Yeah, we get exploit weakness, and then we will move into the mythos phase. Third um, doom is down. In fact, there's four doom. Let's see what the encounter deck has. If you have no clues, false lead gains surge. Okay. Let's go again. Ahead. Ah, no, and we get the hunting night gaunt. Oh, dear. Things have gone from bad to worse to worse. We've now got two enemies on us. Whoops. Oh, boy, boy, oh, boy. <laughs> okay, looks like we might be fighting a bit here. Investigation phase three actions on to Darren. Okay, so um, now we should have actually exhausted the codec. I've just realized, and there should be a resource on the Hunting Night Gaunt. Okay, um, hmm. do I try and evade? We're really kind of in a bit of a pickle here, aren't we? Let's try and evade Peter Warren first. 
with our first action. Chaos Bag gives us a zero, so we succeed and we evade him. So he's evaded. Let's then try and evade the Hunting Night Gaunt. One versus a three, so it's minus two. Three minus two is one, one versus one, so yes, we succeed there too. So they're both evaded. And then, um, yeah, we really kind of need to circle back around. So we, uh, we can't circle back around that way. This is a bit tricky, isn't it? Where do we go? Go to the south side. And maybe we can get alarm. Or do we go to the graveyard to get the clues? Yeah, maybe we do that. Just trying to think where the best place to go is. If we go up to north side, we can get some clues. But I think the shroud there's a three. But then we're going to have to move through Wolfman Drew to get away from the Gnigaunt. So we've got a river town. Hmm. There's no easy answer here. I think I'm going to move down to south side, see if we can get uh, Milan Christopher. What's at south side? Search your deck. Yes, it is Mars Boarding House. Nice. Okay. So that was okay. We um, I made a bit of an error, I think, or Daryl made the error. I didn't make the error, but uh, moving into... So at Miskatonic University, we got the baseball bat out. We got the two clues with deduction. We then spent the two clues and ended up with Peter Warren. Um, oh, that was last time. Now this time we invaded them both uh, successfully and then we've moved to South Side. Hopefully we can get ourselves... Um, oh, we can get um, um, Milan. Okay, so let's move into the enemy phase. Nothing happens. Move into upkeep. Okay, we've got lots and lots of guts, don't we? Which I'm not sure that we need that much. Okay, mythos phase. Five doom is down, which means the mass hunter. I've forgotten about that. The mass hunter is going to be with us. Let's flip. Let's see what the encounter deck has. It's got obscuring fog. So it gets plus two shroud. But we can exhaust Daryl's Kodak and put a resource on it. Yeah. There you go. Um, there we go. Okay. So let's move into the investigation phase. Three actions onto Daryl. So we've got a couple of problems here. First is that uh, Hunting Night Gaunt's going to start moving. And second, we the, the uh, Mars Hunter will be upon us as well, and we're kind of not in a great place for either of those things where we are. Um, hmm. Hmm. Oh dear. And we're kind of low on cards. We've not really got an ability to fight. But also, we're kind of in a bad place because we're going to get monstered by the monster hunting Night Gaunt unless we move somewhere else where well, that's not going to happen. So I'm going to take two actions and move back to the house of all places. And then I'm going to draw a card because we need more cards. Yeah. Okay. This is not, this is not great. Enemy phase, the Night Gaunt moves to Rivertown. Oh dear. Upkeep. Oh no. Get ruined film. Remove four evidence from cards you control. I've got none. I've got no evidence. So I take four horror. Wow. Wrong one. 
And that was that was doubly bad. Not only did we take the horror, but also it means we didn't draw another card. Okay, we will move into the mythos phase. There is all the doom. Oh dear, this is not going well for poor old Daryl. Let's see what we get. Of course, we get the Mars Hunter. Hello, Daryl. Oh, yeah, press pass isn't going to help you now. Ha. All right. Um, okay, and um, we exhaust the Kodak because a monster has come out. Enemy or treachery, put a resource on the Mars Hunter. So the problem with all this is, is these resources are fine, but you've got to discover clues to move the enemies away. So the problem is if you're playing true solo, you kind of, it's not really going to happen as much. Okay, let's go ahead into the investigation phase. Three actions onto poor old Daryl. Well, I think we've just got to stand. I mean, we could evade, I suppose, two versus three. But then we would have to move and try and evade again. I think we try and see if we can fight this. Can we do it? We are a two. That makes us a four. It's going to be a four on a four. Ah, oh, I think we just stand and fight. Bugger it. Let's do it. Okay, first action. Okay, so we are a two, four, six. Six on a f six on a four. If we throw in the baseball bat, Chaos Bag gives us a skull, which means we do succeed. Um, <laughs> um <laughs> of all the things to get. Um we can do we can take that back to our hand. And uh, we do two points of damage. It's just everything's going wrong here. Ow! Okay, we do two points of damage to the Mars Hunter. Um, oh boy, this is just everything is just going wrong here. Um, I think we. Uh, I think we evade the Mars Hunter. Chaos Bag gives us another skull, which succeeds. Where have you gone? Um, then we will move to River Tan. Then we will get rid of the Ace of Rods. And we can evade the hunting night gaunt. Chaos bag makes it a minus four, but hold on, this gave us two, so we were f that makes it a five, doesn't it? Yep. So that, so we were going at a five, but that makes it a minus four. Five minus four is one, so we still managed to evade uh, the hunting night gaunt. However, we put a Doom on the nearest enemy. One, two, one. Up. Oh. We put a doom on the uh, Mars Hunter. Um. Yep. Okay. I think that's our go. I just realised I hadn't put out the second agenda, which is time is running short. It certainly is. You don't want to risk taking so long, so you head to safety with the information you have gathered. So there we go. So what a nightmare, hey? What a nightmare. So we, um, <laughs> we, first thing we did was we managed to hit the um, Mars Hunter for two, but we got a skull, so we had to bring the um, baseball back back to our hand. We then successfully evaded the Mars Hunter. We then moved. And we used our Ace of Rods to successfully evade the Hunting Night Gaunt. So we really are just in crisis mode here, just trying to get back into some kind of semblance where we can start doing the things we can do. Uh, and uh, things are not going well. So we'll move into the enemy phase. 
no enemies are doing anything as such. We'll move into upkeep. Well, the, the hunting knight gaunts back on us. Uh, Mass hunters back up in the, the house. Yes. So, and we get emergency cash, which is, again, not really what we need at the moment. And we've got two lots of guts, which have not been helpful. So one doom, there's two doom down in the second mythos phase. Let's see what the encounter today is. Wings of Darkness. <laughs> That really, that does, you know what, if we'd been at the house or something like that, that would have been awesome. But we are at Rivertown, so all this does is just give us a damage and a horror. Oh my goodness, we've got to do a test of four, and we are at three. I mean, I guess we got lucky, but I don't, mm, I don't really want to use it. But let's see what the Chaos Pack has, minus two, so it's one versus a four. So no, that wouldn't work anyway. Um, so we take a damage and a horror. Oh dear. Oh no. We're just taking damage and horror. So we're literally two away. We're just one hunting shadow away from death. So, <laughs> okay, let's move into the investigation phase. Three actions on the poor old Daryl. Oh dear. Sometimes this midnight mask, just everything just goes wrong well the first thing we're going to try and do is evade this <laughs> this hunting night god this ah, wolfman drew is just in the worst place because it's not like you can run run across the top and kind of benny hill the whole thing because he's in the way and i keep drawing him first it's so weird anyway so <laughs> um Let's try and evade the hunting night gaunt. So one versus a three. Let's see what the chaos bag is. Minus three. So it's minus six. That's not happening. All right, let's do it again. One versus three. Zero. Yes. Okay. So we've evaded the hunting night gaunt. We've evaded the... And I think we move... Down to south side again. Uh, try and maybe get the clue and a, get a... Uh, we could actually get one of those. The, a, 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 a evidence. Yeah, maybe. And, yeah. And, and at least now we, we can move to St. Mary's Hospital at least and not be monstered by monsters. So there we go. So... Things are okay, but we're just basically spinning our wheels here. I mean, we're lucky if we get Peter Warren before the end. <laughs> we move into the enemy phase. Um, Mass Hunter moves up. Upkeep. They're all back. Let's bring them to the front. Next Mythos phase, there is now two Doom down. Three Doom Dan, actually. Let's see what the good old encounter deck has. False lead. If you have no clues, false lead, I don't. So we gain Surge. And we get Crypt Chill. I wondered if this was going to arrive. Crypt Chill. Well, then we got Guts here, I suppose. Um, okay, so we are a two. We can make that a four. I don't really want to lose these, but if I had to lose one, it would be the press pass. So we're a four on a four. Chaos bag gives us. <laughs> oh boy! Oh boy! Oh boy! Okay, so um, that means we're at zero versus four, so we can't even get plus two to pass the test. So that is a failure. Oh dear! Uh, we lose the press pass. Oh. <laughs> Oh, this game. Don't you love this game? Okay. <laughs> let's, let, let's move in to the investigation phase. Three actions onto poor old Daryl. Oh, boy. All the confidence that he had after the first season, you can see it has rapidly, um, <laughs> rapidly evaporated for him <laughs> in this one. He lost his film. He, oh, he's done so, so many things have gone wrong. Okay, so we've got three actions. So what are we going to do? So I think the first thing we do is we 
um, search for an ally asset. So we will get Malai and Christopher. So we will look at all our cards. Um, oh, there he is. We'll get, put Malai and Christopher into our deck. Not into our deck, into our hand. That was our first action. Second action, I'm going to get this clue. So a two versus a five. Let's make that a, let's leave, should we leave that as two V five, three up? We've got lucky if, yeah, let's go ahead. And we get tablet, which is a minus three. Two V five. Five minus three is two. We're all golden there, so we get the clue. And which means after you discover any more clues, evidence from that location. So we get the evidence. We get our first evidence. Yay. And for the final action, I'm actually going to move to St. Mary's Hospital. So we're now in a good place because these guys, I'm going to get them to move to south side. I just realized, ah, plus two shroud. It was actually a shroud of four. It was a shroud of four. Yeah. It was actually a shroud of four, wasn't it? Uh, four. We took a tablet, which was minus three, which meant... Uh, we would have gone down from five to two. We would have been two versus four. So we were had, would have had to have spent lucky to make it uh, four. Yeah, which would have gotten rid of the obscuring fog. I'm assuming I could keep that, but that would have gotten rid of the obscuring fog. <sighs> That's right, isn't it? So it was minus three. Um, and we were a five. So we were a five versus a four. We were one up. We got minus three. So we went from five to two, two to four. Yep. Okay. And then we're back here. Okay. So yes, we, um, so we got ourselves Malign Christopher from Mars Boarding House. We managed to get the clue and some evidence, but we needed Lucky to do it. And then we moved to St. Mary's Hospital. Okay. I feel like we're getting somewhere again. Okay, enemy phase. These enemies move down to south side. Where is that, Daryl? Where's he gone? Okay, they're after me. Um, and then we will move into upkeep. I get another flashlight. Then we will move into the mythos phase. Third doom is down. So there's four doom altogether. We're halfway through the second. Let's see what the encounter deck is. Oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> Place two doom on the nearest cultist enemy. So that's made it six. Wow. Okay. Six. We've. Oh my goodness. <laughs> uh, I just realized I got the clues here at Miskatonic University and I never put a thing on it. Wow. I wondered why the crowd was going wild. I'm thinking, why are they cheering? Oh, now we know. Let's go get the right one. Okay. Um, all right. Investigation phase, three actions. On to Daryl. We, we don't have a lot of time to do stuff. get this clue yeah I think we get this clue we move and we spend the two clues so first action we're not going to run out of time are we it's three six yeah okay so first action uh, we will investigate a two versus a five two versus five chaos bag it gives us Another tablet, two versus five. Yeah, we still succeed. So that's another clue. 
second action, we will move to Miskatonic University. There we go, there's Peter Warren. And third action, we will spend a clue. Oh, sorry, two clues. And we'll put him in the victory display and the crowd goes wild. There we go. Okay. So we will move into the enemy phase. The enemies move to St. Mary's Hospital. Don't know why that's there. We'll move into upkeep. We get lucky. I don't think we've been very lucky this game. And we, then we will move into the mythos phase. Four, seven doom. So this is the last round. Let's see what the encounter deck has. <laughs> wizard of the Order. <laughs> okay. We will, you can put the Wizard of the Order uh, any empty location. You put a doom on the Wizard of the Order. Yeah. Okay. Whatever. Yes. All right. Investigation phase. Three actions onto Daryl. Not sure that we can. We could move to north side and we could investigate twice, but then the bell tolls. But that would give us an extra victory point. Or we could just resign. An extra victory point is always good in the investigator game, so it might be worthwhile doing that. So why don't we go ahead and move up to north side? Yep. Second action, we will three versus a five. Let's make that a three versus a six, a three versus a seven. Chaos bag gives us a zero, so we succeed and we get a clue. And then we will go again. Three versus five, three versus six, and we have lucky in place. Chaos Bag gives us a skull, which is actually a minus three, isn't it? Yeah. Three versus six, though. We still succeed, and we get the fire clue there. Um, and we get a victory point, and the crowd goes wild. There we go. Okay, and we move into the enemy phase. The enemies move up to Miskatonic. And then we move into upkeep, we get the knife, and then there we go. There's the five, which means the bells toll. Yes, indeed, the 12 bells ring out across the town. It's midnight and there's no time left to investigate the city. You must act based on the information you've collected from the cultist that you found, which was one. So there we go, ladies and gentlemen, my goodness. Turn 11, it's only turn 11, uh, we... We didn't resign in time, but we did get ourselves get ourselves an extra victory point in the process. Never made it to the graveyard, but we did get ourselves one, two, three victory points and one cultist Peter Warren. But really, so many things went wrong, and I think it all started from, and I don't normally do this, but I took the risk at Miskatonic University. I threw in the clues, and we got Peter Warren, which kind of then meant we were... We were stuck messing with him and the hunting night gaunt, which really slowed things down. Then when the mass hunter came along, we had the baseball bat, but we drew a skull, which means then we didn't have the baseball bat. So we just spend a lot of time racing around. So we weren't defeated. We took a lot of damage. We drew our weakness. So we took five horror and four physical damage. Milan Christopher never was never there. Um, so lots and lots of things just went wrong, but we managed to survive to turn 11. So really, yeah, not a great outcome for, for Daryl. He wouldn't be happy with that, I'm sure. But that's the way it goes in the investigator games and indeed the Midnight Masks. It's very swingy how things can go. Um, but there we go. So thank you very much for watching. Please like, comment and subscribe. Now, next time, we will be taking the Scarlet Keys mystic Amina Zidane through the Midnight Masks. Yes, Amina Zidane in the Midnight Masks. And we will see how she goes. But until then, I'm Krabby Terror 8. Thank you so much for watching and goodbye. Thank you.
Thank <laughs> you. 